ready start sir it might be desirable if i explain to the house why this amendment has become necessary under the mines maternity benefit act a woman working in the mine is entitled to maternity benefit for a period of 8 weeks this period of 8 weeks is divided into two parts of 4 weeks each one part preceding delivery and another part succeeding delivery the 4 weeks before delivery is a period of optional rest during which a woman may work and get full wages or absent herself and get the maternity benefit with regard to the 4 weeks succeeding delivery it is a period of compulsory rest during which the woman must not work in fact it is unlawful and criminal for her to work and be content only with the maternity benefit section 5 of the maternity benefit act provides for the payment of maternity benefit if honorable members refer to the works as they stand in line 9 of that section they will find that the words as they stand are absent from work now it has been suggested that these words particularly absent from work or rather from work are the words which are ambiguous i will briefly explain to the house why it is suggested that the words from work introduce a certain amount of ambiguity suppose the mine was closed by the owner on a particular day would the woman be entitled to maternity benefit it is suggested that she would not be because the implications of the words absent from work mean that there is work but when a mine is closed there is no work therefore the existence of the words from work has introduced this ambiguity i have compared section 5 with the five different maternity benefit acts which have been passed in the different provinces and i find that the words from work do not exist consequently it has become necessary to remove this ambiguity by removing these words the amendment is sought to be carried out by two different amendments one is to delete the words which have caused this ambiguity from section 5 and make the section read to the effect that for every day during the four weeks preceding delivery the woman would be entitled to maternity benefit as i told the house the four weeks preceding delivery are periods of optional rest when she may choose to go and earn her full wages or stay at home and be content with maternity benefit with regard to the days on which she chooses to amend we have added a proviso that she shall not be entitled to any maternity benefit at all sir the principle which underlies this bill has already been explained by me at the last time when the bill was before the house and it is therefore unnecessary for me to traverse the same ground again i would briefly like to point out to the house the changes of principle which the select committee has made in the original bill the house must have noticed that although there are many changes which the select committee has made there are really four which are matters of principle in the first place there has been an enlargement of the category of workmen to which this bill is made applicable we have now included workmen employed in plantations the second change relates to the rate of the first contribution which is to be made to the insurance fund the bill as it originally stood permitted the government to levy a rate of 50 paise per rupees 100 of the wage bill of an employer the select committee has reduced the rate from 50 paise to 25 paise the third change made relates to the use of the unspent balances in the insurance fund the original proposal in the bill was that the balance left in the fund should be merged in the general revenue and should be used for the general purposes of governmental expenditure the select committee has made a change and provided that the balance should be returned to the employer who has made the contribution in proportion to the contributions made by them 
the fourth change relates to contract labor it is now provided that in cases where the employer engages a contractor who in his turn engages workmen to carry out the work he has taken on contract the employer who employs the contractor will nonetheless remain responsible for the payment of the compensation these are the principles which have been touched by the select committee in the changes which have been made as the house will see there are several amendments on the agenda to the bill some of the amendments are matters of procedure and they have been put forth by the government largely for the purpose of meeting such criticism as was leveled against the bill after it emerged from the select committee and i hope there will not be much contention on these amendments sir i do not think anything has emerged from the speeches which have been delivered by honorable members who have taken part in this debate which calls for any detailed reply as i scrutinize the points made i find that there were certain points which could have been relevant only at the time when the bill was read for the first time i remember that they were raised and i also remember that i attempted to give what reply i could at that stage i do not wish therefore to spend any more time in discussing the thing over again with regard to the point that has been made with regard to certain specific clauses in the bill as well as the amendments that are on the agenda paper i think it would be best in the interests of economy of time that i should not devote any part of my speech to them at this stage it would be proper and relevant if the matter was taken up at the time when the amendments were moved i think my honorable friend will realize that if his amendment is adopted practically there would be a serious limitation imposed upon the number of workmen who would be entitled to the benefit of this bill first of all sir as my honorable friend said we must go rather cautiously in this matter because his act presupposes that there is a body of organized employers on which this liability can be imposed it is a question of collecting premia and you cannot collect premia from people who are merely walking in the streets you must have some organization on which you can fasten this liability and one has to go very cautiously on the matter of workmen that could be included in this bill the second difficulty that i feel is that the acceptance of the amendment of my honorable friend would not enlarge the category of workmen which are included at present in this bill sir i have very carefully examined the workmen's compensation act and i find that there are altogether nine different categories of workmen to which that act applies comparing the categories of workmen to which we propose to apply this act with the categories of workmen to which the workmen's compensation act applies i find that there is only one difference the workmen's compensation act applies to buildings and public works that is the only category of workmen to which the present bill does not apply on others both the bills are on a parity then the other difference is this if we apply the workmen's compensation act as it stands obviously that will bring with it the definition of workmen which is given in the workmen's compensation act my honorable friend will remember that the definition of workmen in the workmen's compensation act is a very circumscribed and limited definition it excludes from the category of workmen those who are casual employees and one does not know what would be the number of casual employees that may be employed in any particular industry to which this bill applies my honorable friend will also recollect that the workmen's compensation act excludes the category of people who are employed in clerical capacity our bill does not exclude either the casual employee or the people employed in clerical capacity i think my honorable friend will agree that although on an examination he will find that some minor category of workmen has been omitted the definition of workmen is much larger than what it is under the workmen's compensation act i hope that my honorable friend will withdraw his amendment sir i will move this amendment number 5 now 
not much explanation is necessary in support of this amendment as the house will recall the clause at its stands make the bill exclude the government employees and railway servants from the application of this bill when i moved the first reading of the bill i told the house that although this bill did not apply to this category of workmen the government had made ample provision to pay compensation to their own servants unfortunately my speech evidently did not carry conviction to some members of the house and they still persisted that instead of taking responsibility in an administrative manner responsibility should be imposed by statute sir i have thought it fit to accept the suggestion made and therefore i shall be at a later stage moving the amendment to clause 3